You're watching Live Inspired with Tracy Claiborne. This week, my guest on the Live Inspired podcast is Jen Gallagher. Jen is a designer, blogger, and teacher who works full-time in the creative industry. Be sure to check out her blog at jengallagher.com and don't miss her YouTube channel. She has 148 videos there to inspire you. Let's take a moment and look at some of Jen's pages and find out how we can find inspiration from them. As you can see, Jen has a very bright, fun, and colorful style, and it's very detailed. Jen's pages are very recognizable, but she has a lot of design styles that she uses to keep her work fresh, as you can see here. Her pages don't always look alike, but I can always tell that they're hers, or if someone says that's a page by Jen Gallagher, I say, yes, that looks like her. Now, of course, as all designers do, she does have a few designs that she repeats sometimes. Here are some grid layouts, and as most designers, she loves a great grid, it looks like, and she does them very well. I love all of these. She also loves to do my favorite thing, which is mixing patterns and scrapbooking, and I love this page and the fresh colors of it and the mix of patterns, and this with almost a sunburst look, and I love that die-cut title. That's excellent, and I really love how the picture stands out on this. Your eye goes right to those blue eyes. Beautiful. And I love the strips here, very fun. One thing that I think of when I think about Jen style is that she often uses tabs peeking out of the top or something peeking out of the top of a layout. As you can see on this one, there are tags this week and then the little craft tag at the top of the layout. And this one actually has file tabs. That's a look that she uses repeatedly in her layouts. It's, I would say it's it's one of her signature style looks. I really love this layout. It's perfect to me. And you can see on this page, she's used some tabbed elements as well. And on this one as well, the rules and the little blue piece behind are peeking out from above. And I love how she has some items at the top of this. And this leads me to another style of hers that I really identify with Jen. And that's something that we'll call divide and conquer because she often separates her page into different sections. So you can see here, this picture is the focus because all of these pattern papers are surrounding it and then your eyes just immediately drawn to that cute picture. I love the movement of the title on that page, and I love those layered hearts. And here's another one that you can see is divided into sections. It's kind of a two-third, one-third design, which I love. Probably a little less than one-third, but I like that the section at the bottom and then the two-thirds on the top and those cute ribbons hanging down. Here's an older page of hers, and she can see she divided this into sections, and just the piece going across the middle gives you, I think when you have your page divided into sections, it's easier to decide what you want to put in each section. So this is a really good design to copy if you're looking for something different that you've never tried before and, and it's just fun to replicate. I really like this one and I like this one. I love the colors on this and I love those beach layouts those beach photos layered. I think that is so fresh and you don't see that done very often. And I like those colors at the bottom and how that little bit of green really pops and it's just so serene and soothing. And here's another one that I really like the divided sections and sometimes you can see she has space in between the sections and sometimes she doesn't. This one, the sections are bumped up together. And then this is one of my favorite layouts of hers. I love this. This is the sections and the tabs at the top. You can see the tabbed items peeking out at the top. So this is classic Jen Gallagher to me. And I just love the perfect place for the title. I love that cute picture. And then this is probably my favorite of all of them. I love how the picture in the bottom right hand corner is so precious. And then she just uses some really sweet pattern papers to complete the layout. I love so many of Jen's layouts that it was difficult for me to choose just one layout to base my project on. So I decided to mix it up a little bit this week and here's what I came up with. For this week's video, I decided to do it a little bit differently and instead of doing a direct copy or using a specific layout for inspiration for my page, I decided just to incorporate elements of Jen Gallagher's work into the page I'm making and 
talk about how we can be inspired just by choosing to recognize the elements of style that someone does consistently that inspire us and then incorporating those into our own work. You know, if we want to change and grow and change things up, we can look to other people's designs for cues on how we can do that. So again, here's the stack I always work with right now of 100 square prints that I got done at Snapfish. And so I looked through to see what kind of story I wanted to tell. I have several pictures of Caroline and her daddy, my husband. And I thought, well, I haven't scrapped with anything about him in a while. And I thought about doing this one and calling it just the two of us and talking about how we're always together. But I really, like I said, I haven't scrapped anything about my husband in a while. So I found this picture that I absolutely love. It is from Father's Day this year. And we went to Panda Express after church and they just happened to both be sitting there and their sunglasses were near and they put them on to go and it was hilarious how cute they were. So I took this picture and I love it. It's one of my all time favorite pictures of them. So I'm going to, what I'm going to do to incorporate gin style into mine is I'm going to make my page have some divided sections like she does. And so I know I'm going to want to use several patterns. So I'm going, when I want to use several patterns, I don't want to cut up a bunch of 12 by 12 papers. And I have a boatload of six by six paper pads. So I look through my paper pads to find one that would coordinate with my husband's tie and his black shirt and I found this one and I absolutely love it. I think it has, you know, a manly feel to a lot of the papers and it's not overly girly. Of course, I'm not going to choose the ones that are overly girly. So I'm going to use this and instead of my white background that I normally start with, I decided to go with more of a cream. I only had one piece of eight and a half by 11 cream paper, cream cardstock. So I'm thankful I even had this. And this one is Walnut Cream by Basil. So I'm gonna go through and choose the patterns and decide how I want them cut out. And I'm gonna name this page Goofballs, I believe. So I'll choose those and then I'll be right back. Okay, so after much, trial and error, I've decided that I'm going to go with this. And at first I was going to have space in, be in between each section. And so I was going to have it like this. And then I thought, no, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to push them all together. And, you know, I wanted some red. I didn't want a lot of red because when I added a red like this, it seems to overwhelm the picture. So I wanted everything to be subtle. So I found this red and added a little more there. I'm going to type a lot of journaling here because I don't scrapbook about their relationship that often. I feel like I need to do at least one page a year where I talk about their relationship. So I'm going to put the journaling here and try to find some black letter stickers where I can put goofballs. They're going to have to be tall and skinny. And I will glue everything down and come right back and put the title down and show you where I'm at. Okay, so I have these Chipboard Alpha stickers I got at the Target $1 spot. And I absolutely love them. And I actually got two packages. And if I go back and see more, I'll probably get another one. And I wanted to make this say goofballs. But I think that it's going to be too long. So I think I'm going to make it say nut jobs because that's something we say all the time. Like, you two are nut jobs. And so, you know, if not, I could make it say, so silly. I thought about making this about how much they're alike, but I've already done a layout a long time ago called So Alike. So in my journaling, I'm just going to talk about how they're just nut jobs. They're always laughing. And if I'm in one room, they're in the other room just laughing their heads off. And I don't know what they're laughing about. And it annoys me sometimes, to be honest. And so, they're, she is so much like her daddy. She's, she just came out with his personality. So I I'm, I'm just need to think for a minute about what I'm going to put, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've been really thinking about what I could call this. And the more I got to doing the journaling, the more I decided that I didn't want to make it be about them being nutty. I just wanted to make it be about how much Caroline is like her father. So I just said, Caroline, you're so much like your daddy. And I just talk about how much alike they are. Now, what happens when you 
do something like this where you're butting things up against each other is it's very difficult to get everything lined unless your trimmer is absolutely perfect and mine is not. So what you have to do is the very last piece that you put on, instead of butting up against, sometimes it has to just go over, overlap a little bit of the other portions. Now the problem with that is there might be a little bit of space. This is why, one reason I don't normally do things like this. It kind of drives me crazy when things don't line up. Not kind of. It does drive me crazy. <laughs> and um, now I'm going to try to move this piece in a little bit. It's like putting a puzzle together. So now this is overlapping down here just a little bit and you can see something is not cut correctly because these diamonds on that pattern, either this is not symmetrical, something is not symmetrical, although everything looks straight to me. So I'm gonna put a little piece of some other, maybe that, a little piece of some other pattern there. That's why I left a little room there at the bottom of the journaling. Yeah, this is just what you have to do. And also, as you can see, the right side of the layout is has more space on it than the left side, even though I measured and measured this. I mean, it's hilarious how much I measured this. So, I think I'm going to trim that off. Now, these things probably wouldn't bother most people, but I like for things to look very lined up. So I think I'm going to trim some off there and I'll probably mount it on another piece of like cream or Okay, well, there we go. I like that anyway, that, it's like it needed a little something there. Okay, so it says, Carolyn, you're so much like your daddy. I was a very hyper kid who taught 90 miles per hour and craved attention. I worried that you would inherit that from me, but you did not. You were born calm and happy, just like your daddy. So I just talk about how even physically they are so much alike. So I decided, I got to thinking about this picture and I thought, well, would it be funny to say twins? And then I thought, well, that's kind of a stretch because, you know, they're not twins. They look so much different. And then I thought about that movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger and Danny DeVito and how they have on sunglasses like this. So I thought, even if nobody else thinks about that but me, when I look at this layout, it'll make me laugh. So, you know, I just scrapbook mainly for my own enjoyment. So... <laughs> I'm going to call it twins. So let me see about this title. I'll put that down and then I'll be right back. So here's how I did the title. And I always like to leave a very dedicated spot for my title. So I also like to use paper that has some kind of grid or line on it. It helps me to line it up. So you can see there's a very thin blue line on this. And so I lined the title up there was a line at the top I was using and that helps me get it straight. Now, because as I said, this was hard to get lined up in a grid, I ended up with a little more room on the right side. So I trimmed that down and I actually mounted it on a piece of watercolor paper that I had in my drawer. And I really like how thick it is now. I like a really thick, sturdy layout. So now what I'm gonna do is go through my color bins of black and red and also my die cut bin and see if maybe I can add something up here, maybe a little something down here, just a little bit of something to spruce this up and then I'll be done. So I added some black rain dots that I've had for a while and I'm probably going to add a few more but as I went to put some different embellishments I mean I have a boatload of embellishments that I could put on this page but every time I would start to put an embellishment like I thought about putting this 
And it just seemed to be like once I put that on there, that was where your eye was drawn. And I realized that I often, on my pages, I often under embellish. And sometimes I think I want to change that, but in the end, I always want the focus to be on the photo and the story. And I think when you mix a lot of different patterns, the pattern paper is its own embellishment. So I'm perfectly at peace with my clean and simple style. And I like I tried to add this and the green, this is green blue and then this is like a baby blue. And so to me, it just takes away if things don't match and it's just not the right tone. There are a lot of embellishments that say the right thing, but they're not the right tone. And and they're, they're just a different, they just don't go. <laughs> I don't know how else to explain it. So I hope you've enjoyed this week's Live Inspired video. And here are a few close-up pictures. So as you can see, being inspired by someone else's work is not always about scrap lifting or copying them directly. This week I didn't do a direct lift of Jen Gallagher's work, but her style definitely influenced me. And I feel like I can pick out some elements of her style that I'll try to incorporate in my work going forward. The tabs at the top and the divided sections and moreover the bright and colorful part. I really, my layout this week isn't bright and colorful, but I really love how bright and colorful her work is. So I'm definitely going to try to remember that as I'm making pages. So Thanks so much for watching and I hope you'll stop by TracyClayborn.com to find out more about how to live inspired and you'll find links there to all three of my podcasts as well as scrapbooking inspiration and a link to my new class, Easy Hand Lettering. If you make a page inspired by Jan Gallagher's work, I invite you to post it to your social media and use the hashtag LiveInspiredChallenge. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you again next week.